Disclaimer aside, the device we're going to build will help disinfect your masks without getting them wet or degrading the fabric, and it does it through a molecule called ozone. When high voltage travels through air, it ionizes atoms, and when it ionizes an oxygen atom, it creates a three oxygen molecule called ozone. It's extremely unstable and likes to bond with different things of that size, for instance, a viral molecule or maybe a bacteria. It does so in a way where two of the oxygen atoms break off into a diatomic atom, and the remaining oxygen oxygen atom can rip the virus to shreds. It's also extremely efficient. You only need about 500 parts per million in order for it to work. Because of its reactivity, it's also an irritant, which means it can damage the inside lining of the lungs. The good news is it disperses and reacts fairly quickly, so the chances of you coming in contact with a lethal dose are quite slim. But of course, you should use this outside. So to build this device, you need a high voltage power supply. But if you're not like me, you probably don't have one lying around but you might have the key to making one. This is a CRT television and it contains a flyback transformer. In fact, any device with a CRT screen, whether it be computer monitor, portable television, karaoke machine, they're all gonna work here for our purpose. We're gonna take this apart, so you should probably take it outside. Before we take the lid off, you're going to make a high voltage discharging tool so you don't accidentally kill yourself when trying to put this together. Take a screwdriver and attach a piece of wire. Ideally, the other side of the wire could attach to earth ground, so try to connect it to a pipe, radiator, or gutter nearby. If you can't find anything, hammer a piece of pipe into the ground and connect it to that if you have to. Halfway down the wire, splice it and attach an alligator clip. Hang on to this contraption as you'll need it as soon as we open the television. Remove all the screws on the back and front of the TV, then aggressively pull upwards. This is the flyback transformer. It will generate the high voltage we need to create ozone. This suction cup feeds high voltage into the cathode ray tube. We need to discharge the tube and the flyback to make sure it's safe to touch. This is extremely important. Take the alligator clip from our discharge contraption and connect to the other side to the bare wire that runs across the outside of the picture tube. Now force the screwdriver under the suction cup and touch it to the metal wire inside. If you hear a pop, nice. Please don't do this. You see how I have my left hand touching the wire and my right hand touching the screwdriver? Always put your non-dominant hand behind your back when working with high voltage. Using one hand minimizes the risk of a fatal shock. Also, just because a wire is insulated doesn't mean it can't shock you. Don't touch any wires until the CRT is discharged. If you can't get the screwdriver underneath the suction cup, use a flatter head screwdriver and carefully work it underneath. I promise you will get it. It might take a little bit. If not, your flyback wasn't holding any dangerous charge. Keep prying on the suction cup until it pops off of the tube. Then stick the screwdriver in the tube opening just to be safe. And may as well run it across the circuit board where the flyback is attached. Now everything is safe to touch. Start pulling everything out of the case. Cut wires if you have to, throw speakers across the yard. The goal is to get the main circuit board out of the casing and discard the rest. Now we need to find the components. We need a 22 ohm resistor, a 220 ohm resistor, an NPN power transistor, and the flyback transformer itself. A note about the resistors is the values don't have to be exact. Anything from 10 to 50 ohms and 150 to 500 ohms will still work for this driver. These resistors aren't really rated for high power applications due to their size, but we can always combine them in parallel to get a higher power rating. There are many websites that allow you to calculate the values of resistors in parallel. If I use these 39 ohm resistors in parallel, I get 19.5 ohms at 2 watts. The transistor will most likely be the largest one on your board, but we have four transistor candidates here. Google each label on each transistor to find their data sheets. You're looking for NPN power transistor and it will often mention horizontal deflection. It will also give you the pinout which will be important later on. The fastest way to get these components off the board is with a blowtorch. This is extremely dangerous and burning the board can release potent fumes, so do this outside. 
Firmly grasp the component you want to remove and apply heat to the underside for a couple seconds. Then twist the component until it pops out of the board. I also found a DC power jack on this board and I think it will be useful later on, so I'm gonna take that. Now we need to figure out what pins are the primary and feedback coils on this transformer. You're going to need a multimeter for this part. Start by using the continuity function, which beeps whenever the two output terminals are shorted. Start at pin 1 and test for continuity with 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. and write down which pins are connected. Then go back using the resistance setting and measure the resistance between the connected pins. The two pins with the highest resistance around 1 ohm is the primary coil. The pins with the second highest resistance close to the primary pins is the feedback coil. There are actually many feedback coils in a flyback, so you could have chosen any of the remaining pins and it probably would have worked. And then just build the circuit. If you don't know how to read a schematic, then you definitely shouldn't be trying this at home. To power this circuit, you will need a 12 volt power supply. Hopefully you have one of those lying around to power an appliance like a router, keyboard, desktop speakers, alarm clock, you get the idea. Before you test it, take a long piece of non-conductive material like wood and tape the end of the high voltage wire to it. This is called a chicken stick and prevents you from having to touch the bare wire when the device is on. Now when you plug it in, it might not work. If this happens, switch your connection of the primary coil so that it's reversed, and then try again. You will hear a high pitched whine and sizzling when the device is functioning, it's really hard to miss. Bring the high voltage wire near the bottom of the transformer and take note of which pin that R connects to. This is the high voltage ground and you will need to solder a wire to this later on. You can see two forms of arcs here. Ozone is generated from the corona discharge, it really is called corona, it's not a pun, please do not demonetize me, which is when the high voltage sprays out into the open air over a greater distance. This happens when we pull the electrodes farther apart. Keep this distance in mind as you're building an enclosure for the device. After you turn off the device, always touch the high voltage out to the ground pin as flybacks tend to hold a nasty charge and can shock you if you aren't prepared. Now in terms of how to capture the ozone itself, you can really get creative with it, but let me show you what I came up with. This is the final setup that I came up with. I'm actually using a kick pan tin. What I decided to do is put two screws in it and I've actually taped up the bottom here so that it doesn't arc on the bottom instead. And I've distanced it just so there's a little bit of corona. There's no actual spark discharge. So what you want to do is put your masks in here, turn it on for about three minutes, and then put the lid on while it's on, obviously. Let it sit there for about 10 minutes after you turn it off to let the ozone really distribute throughout the enclosure. And that's about it. You're good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I don't know who this is going to help. Um, you know, somebody with these skills probably has other better solutions, but if anything, it's a cool project that is actually quite practical. I'll be back soon. Peace.